When you really start thinking about it, the sheer vastness of media at your leisure is nearly incomprehensible. There's so much stuff that you can just google or find hidden somewhere deep beneath the internet archive. Being born in the 21st century, I never really got to experience the height of physical media and searching far and wide for your favorite TV shows and DVD stores or waiting weeks and weeks for a VHS tape of some movie that came out yesterday. The internet practically reinvented and revived many forgotten gems from complete and total obscurity. You may recall how YouTube's recommended section often brings people to albums that are extremely obscure. Music made by artists who realistically only reached an audience of thousands. I feel like the concept which is most comparable to these scenarios is a message in a bottle. The sailor who drops the message down into the sea can never know what happens to it. But eventually that message will hit the rocks and somebody will discover it. I guess in a way some artists have really bad luck most of the time. Most of the music released every day is doomed to be listened to by just a few people. Hell, even I used to make music before I got bored and gave up. Sometimes the pain of your work not taking off can be too much to bear and often, these artists release just a few albums before retiring far too early. There are many bands that fall under this umbrella but one you may know of is the band Panchico. Their story is one of internet culture, changing times and an album discovered in a charity shop. But enough with the introduction, this is the impossible revival of Panchico. As with many of the stories in this channel, we have to go back to the year 1997. The late 90s was crucial to the popularization of anime in the West. The anime boom as it was known was due to dubs of many shows airing on TV channels, as well as official localized home media releases after a decade or so of fan subs and mail orders. It was the perfect time as well, as the interconnectivity of the still newly popularized internet gave these fans a way to connect like nothing that came before. The era in which Panchico originated from was a golden age for British music. Bands like Radiohead, Oasis and Blur revitalized sounds heard before in the 60s and 70s and made it their own. Music in the 90s was at a creative epoch pretty much everywhere else in the world as well. Indie music started sprouting up in many niche communities, and some of these bands garnered enough critical and commercial popularity that they still managed to get millions of listens every year. Whether or not Panchico would end up being one of these bands would have to be seen. The band featured a ragtag group of high schoolers, Owen Davies on lead guitar and vocal duties, Andrew Wright on the keys and guitar, Sean Faraday on the bass, and John, last name unknown, on the drums. With this lineup, they would start doing shows in local venues to gain buzz. We'd go out to Lincolnshire to our drummer's place to rehearse. He had a converted cellar and a bit of a bigger house, so his parents were a little more tolerant of the horrendous amount of noise we'd make. We started recording and producing stuff the best we could with what little understanding of the process we had, and eventually started entering Battle of the Bands competitions and sending demos to record companies. The band competitions were helpful in getting the band the small yet loyal following, and with the very little knowledge they had, the band began recording their debut EP, Death Metal, with influences ranging from super free animals to Radiohead, and topics from science fiction books and obscure anime, the album was in a way ahead of its time, and a product of it. The transitionary point of 1999 to 2001 was a massive period of growth for the nerdy subcultures I mentioned previously, and Panchico was just one of a few bands that tapped into the market. Despite their huge potential, they would not get the backing they needed to succeed. In 2000, they burned around 30 CDs with death metal to send to labels, journalists, and friends. But despite all their work, nobody would listen. There was only one review done by Simon Williams of Fierce Panda. Death metal, of course, is anything but death metal. Ha ha ha. Lovely sweet vocals, then some viggy viggy stuff. Needs a bit of va va boom on the vocals front. I really like this. It would make my ears stand on end if I heard it on the radio. Stabilizer for big boys is great. Swearing plus ranting in a very familiar style. Laputa is lovely and slow. Bugger knows what they remind me of. Despite wasting hours and hours sampling and recording, their work would be in vain. Despite the lack of buzz, the band still continued to perform and record, with their second EP Kicking Cars set to release in 2001. But that release would not happen, as the band disbanded after a sudden sudden in Ashfield. The journey of making something can be brutal. So much manpower is used to create basically any media you enjoy on a regular basis. This is especially the case with music. Sometimes these things do not get the attention they need to be sustainable, and often these bands get so obscure even their names are forgotten, their life's work being condensed into a few dozen second clips. 
with strangers trying to guess their names. Some bands just don't work out in the long run and are doomed to be forgotten by time itself. No legacy, no future, just some group that existed a long time ago. They made some songs alright, but who cares? Nobody. And so ends the tale of Panchico, a band that existed a long time ago, made a couple records and then vanished overnight. Well, that was the end of it. Until July 2016. A 4 channer was browsing through the shelves of an Oxfam store in Nottingham when they found something peculiar. The cover was that of an anime girl. The text on the cover read Panchico, Death Metal. And so this user bought the record and decided to ask the music board about it. Hey hey, I picked this up because it looked interesting. I wasn't able to find any references to it, online whatsoever. Even with super obscure bands, you might expect to find some on old MySpace page or mentioned in some forum. Does anybody recognize this album? I half expected it to be Noise Pop or some Vaporwave Vankery. Listening to it now, track 1 is like hella lo-fi shoegaze with noise panning back and forth. This isn't some vile marketing bullshit. I'm just curious if anyone can shed some light on it. And I'm slightly excited by the prospect of owning a rare album. Try sharing it. Looks like a bootleg compilation similar to Bowie Pop. QR. Also, I swear that cover is a Descripts reference. Ah, I'm technologically inept though. What's the easiest way to do this? Upload to Mega? I think my account got deactivated for an activity or some shit. Rip and dump on Mega, yeah. Uploading it now. Had to make a Mega account and shit. Prepare for a mild disappointment. Still... Track listing slash names are fucked, whatever. Listening now. Bit rush noise over a dude singing with a guitar. Some synths. A breakbeat entered. Some subtle vocal sample in the background. Wild vinyl crackle appears. You're a good man and on. Okay, I think I'm going crazy. This sounds like the CD wasn't properly burned or has a weird dithering algorithm. Maybe the noise isn't supposed to be there. Besides, it's just really weirdly mixed. And there's the same noise in all songs. That would explain it. Well, that was horrible. It sounds like something someone who visits me would make. It's almost like Opie used a random artwork he found around to push his shitty album to everyone else. But that can't be. Who would lie on the internet just for a few downloads of this shit? This is officially now a meme album. Remember to viral this everywhere, I'll be watching. There it was. A decade and a half after its arrival, it had finally reached its audience. The album was horribly affected with this crowd, creating the odd noises described in the 4 chance thread. But despite all the series suggesting the album to be a mere chorus, it still managed to slowly gain an audience. The unique genre of the album was apparent to many, and now the only thing left to do was contact the band members, maybe even reform the band. To quote an article by Weiss News, it didn't take long after that for discussions to start springing up across Reddit forums, Discord channels, private chats, and YouTube. The beginnings of a cult following were developing across the world, as was an intense internet hunt to find Panchico. A growing number of users had joined a dedicated Discord channel, set up by a fan base in Argentina going by the name of Zod. There was only a handful of people in the channel at that time, says Anthony, a UK-based fan, who joined early on and was involved in the hunt. There wasn't much information to go on, so he spent hours looking for indie musicians across the UK who shared the same first names. It was draining work. It was definitely tough to stay motivated sometimes. The search would die down, but then we'd find a new potential lead, and excitement would build. Then they'd get back to us and say, it's not me, or never heard of it, and we'd be back to square one. Eventually, the fans would hit a roadblock. Nothing more could be done. The band members had probably moved on to better and more quiet lives. It would be nice for them to do one more project though, right? The search would remain silent until 2020, when a bombshell would be dropped. Hello, you'll probably never read this, but are you the lead singer of Panchico? Yeah. To their shock, it really was him, Owain Davies in the flesh. After 20 years, he was finally found, unsurprisingly, residing in Nottingham. At first, he was shocked. I mean, who wouldn't? Imagine some random group of strangers hunting your identity for something you made as a teenager. Ugh. Bovane said in an interview, I woke up one Tuesday morning to a strange message on social media asking if I was the singer from Panchico. It was on a music page I had not updated for years. I almost did not answer. Funny how the smallest things can completely change your outlook on life. The group that had been hunting down the record on Discord filled me in. It took me a few minutes to even look it up and even more depressed play. I mean most creative people live in fear of their early work being exposed. So I watched a few videos, giggled, I couldn't really believe it. The song sounded awesome with Rod. It was like they had been on this journey to eventually get back to me, a little worse for wear. 
The genuinely positive responses were heartwarming. It's not a perfect record, but something about it obviously spoke to a few people, and that is an amazing thing. I mean, is it music meant to bring people together? When I found out people had generally made friends and started their own musical journeys, not accepting what mainstream media outlets churn out, it blew me away. The community that made this happen are pretty amazing and I applaud their worthwhile use of the internet. Now they can get on finding some better music to listen to, lol. Anyways, you couldn't make it up, even if there are a few that think so. So, what now? We know the vocalist, but does he still know the other band members? As it would turn out, he did. Andrew and Sean were still his childhood friends and he had maintained contact with them even after their little project disbanded. All three went on to music, although the whereabouts of John last name unknown is a mystery. After this revelation, the band members decided to do something incredible. They reformed. There's two new members to fill an extra guitar and drumming duty respectively. With this regrouping, the band decided to re-release their album on streaming platforms, now in its full glory. Alongside this, they added their second EP, Kicking Cars in the Track Listing, as a little treat. I can see where they are coming from, there is no concrete evidence really, we did not plan for this to happen. Like Andy says, I'm actually new to all this. The story of Panchico is something I am still processing. It has only been a month or two since finding all this out. We have tried to provide as much plausible reason and information that could back up the release date. It seems like the more we provide, the more some folks think it's all hoax. Then the hoax story seems to become more ridiculous and fantastically more complex than the true story. I guess it's flattering that some people cannot accept the music as 20 years old. They just need to listen to a lot more music and realize people are always making weird for the time and unique for the time music. That sometimes takes a while to reach an audience. I also tried to prove the release date's validity, but it started to become pointless. People will believe what they want to believe. The Discord server has some lovely people on there, but it has also opened my eyes to some of the abusive and disturbing behavior that young people experience online. Surely people have got better things to do with their time. To the generally skeptical but recent thinker, I respect that. You got this thing for yourself and I encourage you to do so. Make up your own mind. Thing is, it is real. I lived it. And so, a year or so after the triumphant return of Panchico, they performed a live show for the first time in 20 years. They also went on tour for the first time, performing in many venues and even South by Southwest. Finally, in May of this year, they released their debut studio album, Failed at Mats. As of writing this, they are still touring. So where do we go from here, really? r slash Lost Wave is a fascinating subreddit. Its core intention is to identify mysterious songs, who or what made them, and if the people who made them still exist at all. Browsing through the hundreds of posts, you can find tunes forgotten by time and space, made by people who are out of the public eye, gone on to better lives or afterlives. Passion projects can only last if there is some fulfillment after all, a fan base, a record deal, all that jazz. Sometimes it's easy to think that all your effort is meaningless. All the time you spent on something was all for nothing. In the end, it feels like it wasn't worth it at all. Trust me, I've been there. But maybe not every treasure is destined to be hidden beneath the dirt. They were always made to be discovered. They were made to be found someday. And it doesn't matter if it takes two decades or two centuries. As long as it's found in the first place, and that joy in unearthing this hidden work, can be found right here on the found songs of this subreddit, and has been permeating discreetly throughout this entire video. When you find something so unique, it can not only affect you, but can sometimes, on occasion, affect the band members. This is the exact situation Penchika have found themselves in. After decades of languishing in obscurity, they have finally accomplished their dreams. I think we should be grateful of all the media we have access to. You can easily find any album or song by looking hard enough. But sometimes there exist certain occasions where this is not the case. If you learned anything from watching this channel, it's that stuff can get lost fairly easily. So it's better to cherish every copy of something you have, no matter how insignificant. Because one day, maybe just one day, you may end up like Penchiko.